Right, let's look how we can sort of emit strands, not just from normals, but from random points spread over the surface. So let's just get rid of that. Um, right, so what we need to do is we need to make a new node called, so what I'm going to do is just, while we're fiddling with this, I'm just going to unplug the turbulence that I've put on them, so they're straight, there we go, make visually a bit more sense. Right, so uh, let's do it, so we're going to do a scatter points node. This is fairly new um, node. They've updated it. And um, it's got some quite fancy things going on in it. Um, one of them is blue noise, which is like a it's, uh, it's like a scattering algorithm that doesn't overlap. So it sort of calculates and you can do it on sizes of objects and stuff like that. So you can get nice instant objects over things that aren't overlapping um, which is quite hard to do in things like xgen um right so let's look about that so let's plug that in and just before we uh let's have a look at the points on it which i'll tell you what i'm just going to disconnect this guy so i'm going to make a terminal so i can um just look at use the sort of diagnostic. I mean you can plug diagnostics or anything but this you can just turn on and off so it's quite handy. Um, and I'm just going to do a set point shape so we see it a bit better. Points. Points out. There we go. They're all massive so it's going to be point 0.1. Maybe point zero 0.05. Let's make them spheres so they're a bit visually there we go. Um, right. Uh, yeah, we should do that. So, randomly spread over the surface, you can see. Um, and we can do blue noise. And you can see it spreads more evenly without any sort of close overlap. And we can also do blue noise maximal which will sort of spread them out even more evenly over a random surface. Um, as you can see there, let's select them. Oops, let's select them, let's select them. Oh, let me select them, there we go. Um, the thing to say about these is they are quite heavy calculations apparently, so they can take quite long to simulate if you've got a lot of them. Not simulate, just to calculate. Um, but we can do just normal random at the moment and there you get these sort of ones overlapping each other you can go into culling cull overlap you see it'll get rid of them and you can have you've got a point basis there so that's quite handy as well and that can be quite quick so coming by one just gonna get a few of them um, but I'll probably just go for let's just do blue noise for the start and uh, let's put it up to 2000 Maybe 3,000. Oh, actually, I'm going to go 5,000. There we go. Um, right, so we can turn that off now. Don't need to see those. I'll just plug that back into my normals. Um, let's just make these a bit shorter. Point one. There we go. Just so we can sort of see them in the viewport a bit better. Get rid of that. Right, so um, just keep having a quick look at this. Um, so what's good about the scatter is it takes the normal. Uh, it's already put in there by default to, and applies it to the uh, as a property to the point, and then when we use the strands from normals, it's still picking that up. So that's really good. Um, we can also do uh, some vertex painting to do some masks so uh, if I go paint mesh color vertex got the brush I go tools I'm just going to flood it all white to go back to RGB because I don't want to paint that 
and um, you can actually leave it at that because if you just leave that value at one, it will paint that alpha as one as well anyway. Let's just get rid of that for the time being. And I can now, oops, call it. I make it a bit softer. So uh, let's do, let's paint that, let's make it a bit bigger. There we go. The only problem with making it a bit softer is gonna get the nice sort of black bits in the middle. Let's just do that for the time being. I'll tell you what I'll do that and then I'll just do a smooth and a flood. There we go. So we're just flooding the edges. Um right, so how do we get this into a scatter node? It's a slightly different the same workflow as the other ways, but it's just got a slightly little tweak. Um, so Electronic shape, we need to get hold of the color set, uh, color set editor. So by default, it's called color set one. Um, I can rename that to mask if I wanted to. Mask. And now, if we look at this, we should have a property on there called mask. There we go. So Get rid of that. Get rid of that. So I need to get hold of that property. Um, so I get a get geo property. Plug that in. Type in mask. And then do uh, it's a mm, array of float fours. You can always, if you don't know what it is, you can always go here, look at your watch point again, and it tells you, I'll just move this stuff out of the way, they're going to update this watch point, I think, because it's it's not very good. Um, so, we can see here, it's a math, it's a ray of math float four. So, if you're ever confused about that, you can just go in and have a look at these, and it'll tell you what the property is, and you just go, so array of math float four, that's all great. And then we want to plug it in, plug it, plug it into these density weights. Um, if we look mouse over that, that's an auto port of an array float. It's looking for a zero to one, like a mask would be, like an alpha channel. Um, and we're piping out an array of math float four, so we need to convert that to sort of pipe it in, and it's a bit like in a shading network in the hyper shade, you know, when you want to take, you want to use uh, an RGB channel to go into an alpha and it won't let you just drag it in. You have to sort of just take the red channel or the green channel. This is, this is exactly the same what we're doing here pretty much. So I need to make a vector four to scalar. So that will split all the three or all the four values here into their own channels like that. And then I can just Put that in there, and we should see now if I make my strand a bit longer. Not two, but one. Um, see, there's none there. So that's handy if you're doing sort of fur and stuff and you want to paint this out. Um, I think I can just, well, now I'm on the smooth, and let's go back to replace and zoom in. And you can sort of you know live paint that it works pretty quick that's good um let's go back to smooth and get that another little smooth 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 right um so that's how we can go about um applying loads of strands to a surface not based on the normals of the geometry even though this is a create strands along normal let's just lay this out a bit better it's getting a bit confusing so, got my colour, which I could mask, changed it into separate channels, plugged that into the density of this. Now we can just crank this up to 10,000 if we wanted to, or 20,000, or 200,000. Just gonna think about it a bit. There we go. It's um, maybe a bit too many. It's a little bit slow. Uh, let's put that down to 20. All 
Right. Um, what do we want to do next? So if I plug this back in, this uh, set point position back into that, we'll get the noise back on them. And um, one of the things you notice about the noise is um, it's sort of adding noise right from the root onwards. So they're all being moved around. If I hide the thing, yes, just turn the number down. On the scatter points, so elegant on that. So we've now got quite a long network, but you know, all this stuff's just strand properties. Then we're doing this turbulence thing here. Um, strand from normal, so we're scattering. Let's turn that down to 500. So you can sort of see they're all just being, they're just, they're not attached from the root anymore, they're just being moved around. Um, if we hit play, because I've got animation on that, you can sort of see they're just wafting around. So what would be nice is we could just affect, leave the root of the strand and just curl up the ends of them. Um, let's do that in the next video.